Hi guys, so these calls come up from time to time where a person who had voted for Brexit phones into the James O'Brien show to admit that they were wrong. Let's start off by saying that it takes a lot of courage to admit that you are wrong. You don't see Tory MPs doing it, you don't see Jacob Rees-Mogg or Boris Johnson doing it. I've yet to hear a peep from the king of Brexit himself, Nigel Farage, even though he had spent months and years selling lies to people in pubs and in fishing communities. Let's hear what the caller had to say. The, the, the thing that really frustrates me is the fact that I voted for Brexit because of the lies that I was peddled. And yeah. if, I could, if I could turn back the clock and untick that box, I am so distraught with myself for being, especially after listening to commentators like yourself and others, yes. especially after being duped in such a fantastic, fantastically horrendous, abhorrous way. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at myself that I felt for it. I am absolutely fuming with the fact that I voted for Brexit because I, like millions of other people, would absolutely turn back the clock because everything that's been said, everything that's been promised, everything that's been forecast has basically, apart from the negative, has, 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 not, has not come to fruition. Well, I, I don't think you should be so hard on yourself because I, I've got half a dozen people in my inbox still who, who um, haven't seen the light so you should give yourself a break shouldn't you for and, and also you know it might now look in retrospect like some easily avoidable pratfall but the effort that was put into leading you into it it was immense mate they've never spent that kind of money on anything over the years the think tanks the newspapers the magazines the politicians absolutely epic epic effort what, put into it to what to what end? Well, there's to, the to, great to what, mystery of our benefit? time. There's the great mystery of our time, Stephen. To what end? I still don't know what they think they want. I, I, I well, I'll tell you what. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what anybody no. in, in that government is 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 capable of because they've, they've perfectly shown over the last two three years exactly what they're incapable of. Well, that's very true. The lie on the side of the bus, um, which comes into very stark relief when you remember the, the necessity of this national insurance hike, although if he stays in the post, then populism and history suggest he'll probably abandon that for short-term political advantage and to assuage his own slightly querulous backbenchers. But that, that, yeah, that combination... I mean, to be fair, Boris Johnson might have driven the bus, metaphorically speaking. The lie was Dominic Cummings' work. I, very keen not to let him rehabilitate himself in the public. Uh, I, uh, for the time being. But yeah, the bus, the NHS and the money. That's pretty huge, isn't it? So James said that the caller should give himself a break. And I agree. I agree 100% on that. He was fed lies, not just by Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, but by the likes of the Daily Mail, the Sun, the Express, the Telegraph. The BBC, the BBC invited Farage on almost every week. And to every problem, his solution was, we need to leave the European Union. And he went unchallenged. Now, when experts were on, they were given about the same amount of time as the Brexit village idiot. People like Farage were invited onto the BBC because people like him were always available. He had nothing to do. And he was always used as a backup. And also, I think, to drive ratings, which has become so important over the last number of years. Now, the caller asked a very important question. To what end? Why did politicians, why did the media, why did Farage and Johnson, why did they invest so much in Brexit? To what end? And I've said before, Brexit was two-tiered. Disaster capitalism. The type of things that allowed people like Nigel Farage and Jacob Rees-Mogg to make a few quid on the side. But there was also the racism part. By acting tough on immigration, this was gold to the right-wing parties, um, and both UKIP and the Brexit party made gains, but also the Tories. Angry people will come out and vote. Tell them that poor people coming across to Britain to get a better life, that will make them angry. Tell them that they're coming for your jobs. Tell them that they're going to take uh, over your communities, that those communities will be destroyed, or that your house prices will drop and they will come out in droves to vote. Now, many of the working and middle class that voted for Brexit are suffering. Those small business owners who used to sell into the EU are either struggling to find staff or are overloaded with Brexit red tape. 
Now, he also asked, what have they won? Well, they won the ultimate prize. That is to lie to the public and get away with it. Nigel Farage, Boris Johnson have sold Brexit, built on lies, and they haven't suffered the consequences. Brexit was one of the greatest examples of mass manipulation, and sadly, it can happen again. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.